Hey guys, welcome to part two of our brass inserts video. Made a couple changes since the first experiment. The first video was focused primarily on the different materials and different types of infill, and then focusing on whether or not pressing in inserts or melting them in was gonna be better for more general applications. Um, that one took a long time to film, and I've actually gone back to the drawing board with the initial design of the testing pieces and made a much more efficient design for this. The original pieces were these kind of huge blocks that went on the entire rig and used a lot of extra material. These took about five hours to print, one of these at 50% density. Uh, the design that I've changed it to uses a uh, carbon fiber nylon printed base. This is 90% infill and this is actually always mounted to the frame. And then instead of using the full block for the inserts, I switched to using much smaller uh, insertable core designs. So versus the five hours it takes to print one of these, I can knock out one of these in about 45 minutes. So we have a lot more here to test and we'll be going through a bunch of different design styles for the various ways to put threads into your parts. So with the smaller insert design, we've gone ahead and done six different styles of inserts. Uh, the first ones that we'll be running are going to be the cores printed horizontally with the inserts pressed in from above. Um, the interesting thing is that when we were running them out of PLA, they tend to kind of break away the back area with the direction of the force. The nylon X ones instead uh, almost slip out of the core rather than breaking like the PLA ones do. So that's interesting. The next ones are going to have the same core pieces and the same inserts pressed in from above, but instead of being printed horizontally, the parts themselves are printed vertically, so we get a different uh, layer line orientation. Um, the Nylon X ones pretty much broke the same way as the first ones did, where they just slip out. The PLA ones acted more like the Nylon X ones did in this orientation, so they tended to slip out of the parts rather than breaking away like the, uh, the horizontally printed ones did. For the third ones, uh, we're going to be running them with the inserts being run backwards through the parts, so they actually catch on an upper lip uh, and it embeds the nut further into the part itself. So we expect these to be pretty strong. These got to about 80 pounds, and you can still see that they ended up slipping out uh, kind of more from here. The PLA ones almost completely separated from the main block and the insert stayed in entirely. These got up to about 100 pounds before they broke. And again, these were about 80. So uh, these were a lot stronger and the deeper that you set these in, the stronger these inserts are gonna be. The next ones are going to have uh, posit height points put into the G-code for the parts. So they'll print up to a certain height pause, we're going to drop a nut into the part and then continue printing and seal the nut with inside these blocks. And different from the reversed inserts or uh, the standard press inserts, these didn't actually break the parts along uh, most of the core, they kind of tended to pop off the upper layers above the nut, uh, and that's partially due to the posit height. Um, but on average, the PLA lab ones were able to take about 62 pounds of force before they broke, and the uh, carbon fiber nylon ones were able to get to about 58 pounds of force before they broke, so pretty comparable ranges. Uh, the one after that is going to have the same nut design for inputting the threads, but these are actually going to be slotted in the back. So that way when they finish printing, there's no pause point. I don't have to come back and put a nut in. I can slide them in afterwards and then thread through this nut. Most of these did break similarly to the embedded nuts where they just pop off the initial cap. This one took most of the extra material. Um, but the thing with these is that uh, the strength differences on both of these parts was way, way more. These were able to get to still around 67 pounds of force before they broke, uh, but the carbon fiber nylon ones got up to around 80 pounds before they were able to break with the slots embedded. 
And the last ones are not going to have any inserts or any nuts at all. We're going to print the threads directly uh, into the part itself and have the uh, threads be modeled in the STL file. Uh, these are my personal favorite, and they actually sit surprisingly well. The PLA ones came in at about 67 pounds before they broke here, again, still splitting the parts. Uh, the carbon fiber nylon ones with the printed threads did the absolute best out of all of these tests here. These got up to about 112 pounds before they were able to break. And you can see that they completely strip out all the threads um, when they basically kind of destroy themselves. But so far these did really, really well. Um, I will definitely be using these in some of my future projects. Um, but that basically wraps up all the testing. All right, testing completed. What I learned from all of this destruction is that um, the Preston inserts for both the horizontally printed and the slotted ones, there wasn't too much of a difference between those two orientations. Um, the carbon fiber nylon ones were slightly weaker for those two parts, um, but overall were within about 10 pounds of the, uh, the PLA's breaking point. So still pretty much the same. Uh, the reverse threaded ones were much stronger for both of them, but PLA did pull away uh, in the amount of force that it took in order to pull those out. Nylon X still sat around 80%. Uh, the carbon fiber nylon still sat around 80%. Uh, the embedded nuts, when we had the posit heights, those ended up being the weakest parts, but the slotted ones did a lot better. The carbon fiber nylon ones that were slotted in uh, did a lot better than the PLA ones. Those got up to about closer to 100 pounds before those were able to break. Uh, the most surprising of all of these was the carbon fiber nylon with the printed threads in the blocks. These actually maxed out at about 112 pounds before they were able to break. Uh, the PLA ones were still closer to about the 80 or 90 range, uh, but these definitely outperformed all the other blocks. Um, so kind of things to consider when picking what inserts and threads you're going to use for your parts. Um, the horizontally printed standard press inserts are pretty much the easiest ones to go through. Uh, you just print the hole in the part and then press them in and melt them in afterwards. The reverse threaded ones uh, do much better. They're a lot stronger than the standard pressed in ones, but you do have to have a hole going through the entire part in order to run it back through. So it kind of only works for shallower parts. Um, the embedded nuts look the cleanest and are kind of the least noticeable within the part themselves, um, but they do require the posit height. So you kind of have to babysit them and come back, add in the bolts and then seal them in afterwards. Um, running slotted knots is one of the easier methods because you're able to just run the channels through the entire part. They can be in any direction. And then you can of course run the nuts in after the part is completed, but you will have visible slots uh, where all of the parts have been embedded. Um, the kind of last method works better, again, for, it's really highly dependent on the type of material that you're printing with. So in the case of carbon fiber nylon, you can just print the threads in the parts. A lot of the modeling software just has a tool to add the threads in automatically. And then those should hold pretty well. There's basically no um, legwork that needs to be done to add anything else to the parts. They just have the threads in them. So. Definitely have a lot of different methods to consider here. Hopefully all the information we've gathered from these tests is helpful in your future projects and keep an eye out for the next video. Hope to see you soon.